Hey everybody, I'm Alejandro Perez, the CGI Nerd, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at using Python in Houdini. We are going to be using numbers. We're going to take a look at numbers, operators, and some useful built-in functions for numbers. And then we're going to look at how to apply that with the who node, or the who module, sorry. And we're going to right click on the shelf here. I'm going to create a new tool. And here we can start looking at some of the code that we're going to write. And then I am also going to open up the Python shell so that we can look at any outputs. Okay, now that we have that set, we are going to start looking at some information. Okay, so today's day four in the intro to Python and Houdini series. We are going to assign a variable right now to start off with, a x equals five and y equals 10. Then we're going to take a look at operators. So basic operators are going to be your basic math functions like addition, subtraction, and division, things like that. So we have our operator basics addition. So I'm going to take all of this, let's apply it, and then we are going to run this and we can see 10 plus 5 equals 15. So we print out that line that is 15. That's addition for us. So we can also take a look at subtraction. And if we apply this and run the tool, you'll see that we get negative 5. So 5 take away 10 is negative 5. Now we have multiplication. So we are going to be multiplying the x for times y. We have the assigned variable of 5 and 10. And if we apply this and run the code, we can see 5 times 10 is 50. Now we have division. And if we apply this and run it, we have 5 divided by 10 is 0.5. Now if we use two asterisks, in the expression, that is the exponent of a value. So this would be five to the power of 10. Apply that and run it. We can see that is 9,765,625. Now we have the modulo operator. And basically this is the remainder. So if we apply this and run it, we have a value of 5. So if we divided 5 by 10, what is the remainder? It is 5. Now if we were to flip these and we applied this and run it, you can see we have a remainder of 0. The next thing we can take a look at is some built-in functions to use with numbers. So in this first one, we have a variable here that is a string, but the string is a number. So in this example, we'll get a error because we're trying to add a string together to a integer. So let's apply this and run the tool. And you can see that an error pops up. It says that we can concatenate a string with an int. So how do we get past this? We can use the int function. So basically, if we use as an argument the value x and we use the int function, so it's going to be int, and then in parentheses, put the string value that is x. It's going to convert that x value into a integer, and then we can add it to the other value. So 
if we take this and run it, you can say 11 plus 5 is 16. Now we can do a similar type thing if we needed to convert a value to a floating point value. So now we have a string that is 5.5 and we're going to convert that to a float. And we can see that we're getting a value of 16.5. Now we can try taking the, this floating point value from the string and see if we can do it this way with an integer. So let's apply that and run and we can see that we get an error. So we're trying to convert a string that has the floating point value in it but if we try to convert that into an int it's not going to know what to do with it. So that's something to be careful. If you can potentially get a decimal point number with your value and you're trying to convert it to a number, if you convert it to a integer, it can cause a problem and cause an error with your code. Okay, the next thing that we're going to be looking at is rounding numbers. So there's a function called round and inside of parentheses we can set an argument which is our value. This time we're going to just use the value of x and we are we have these variables and we're reassigning it here so I'm just going to clear it to make sure that it's not being confused at all. Okay, so I'm going to apply and run the tool and we can see that with the round right now with 3.14 we are rounding to the closest whole number and in this case it's going to be the value of 3. Now I am going to change the value to the 3.5 instead of 3.14 and if we apply this and run it you'll see that it rounds up to the value of 4. Something to be careful with the value of 5 here is that it's right in the middle between 4 and 3. So with the 5 value, what it's going to do for you is round to the closest even number. So if we were to make this 4.5 looking at the way it rounded before, you would assume it go to 5, but in this case it's actually going to go to 4 because it's rounding to the closest even number. So if we have 3.5 or we have 4.5, they're both going to actually round to the uh, number 4. Then here we can go ahead and add another argument to this round function. So if we add a comma after the number that we want to round and then we give it a number, that's the number of decimal points that it's going to round to. So in this case it's going to round to the closest tenth spot. So let's apply this and run it. And you can see it's going to give us a value of 3.1. Now taking that same concept we're going to round to the closest hundredth spot and let's apply this and here you'll see that it rounds up to 3.15. There's also some pretty useful math modules and one is actually called math that has some functions that you can use but you can find quite a few of them. I'm just going to show you a couple functions from the math module and they come built in also so if you have Houdini you do have access to the math module. So I'm going to import math. It's kind of similar like when we do import who but in this case when we import math we're importing the math module rather than the who module which is just a collection of functions that we can get access to. Okay, we're using 3.14 again and we're going to use the function floor. So if we want to get a command from the math module, we have to start off with math, then put a dot and then follow it up with the function that we want access to. In this case is the floor. And then we're going to have the value of x here. 
So what this does, it rounds down to the closest whole number, no matter what the number is, kind of decimal wise. So if we apply this and run it, we can see that it rounds down to three. Now, if we were to change this value to 3.9 and apply this and run it again, you'll see that we still go down to the number three. So any decimal point in between three and four, as long as we don't get to four, it's always gonna round down to the number three. Now, this is the opposite seal, which is the ceiling. Basically, it rounds to the closest whole number that is higher than that number. So if we apply and run, you'll see that we get four when X is equal to 3.14. And it shouldn't matter, but if we do 3.9, like we did with the other one, apply and run, it's still going to give us a value of four. The next function I want to look at is absolute. So with the ABS, which is representing absolute value of a number, it's giving us the absolute distance from zero. So if we do x equals five, it has five units away from zero. So if we apply this and run it, it should give us the number five. But if we were to change the value of five to negative five and apply this and run it, we're still going to get the value of five. And that's because even though it's in the negative direction, it is still five units away from zero. So we are going to get a absolute number. It's going to be positive and it's just giving us whether you have a negative value or positive value, how far it is away from zero. Okay, so now let's take a look at building out some nodes and being able to do something inside of Houdini. So we're going to apply what we've learned in our Houdini module. So we need to import the who module. Then the next object or the next thing that we're going to do is get the OBJ context. So we're using, we're holding it into a variable, OBJ. We're going to make that equal to who.node, and we're telling it which node we want to access. So in this case, it's going to be the OBJ, which is this default area that we're looking at here. Then we're going to create a geometry node in the OBJ context. So we're going to create a uh, call that node mygeo. This is going to be the variable that we're holding it into. We're using OBJ. OBJ is equal to this whole thing here. So it's basically who.node inside of there as our argument OBJ. So you can literally like replace this in here and it would do exactly the same thing. Then we have dot create node. So we're going to be creating a node inside of the OBJ context. And what type of node we're going to do is a geometry node. And we're going to call it mygeo. So if you did not know that the node type is geo that you wanted to create, we can create a geometry node here by default. There we go. And if we look at the information, you can see here in parentheses, it says geo. That is the type, the node. So if we use the command geo, it's going to create that type of node. Okay, so let's apply this and then run this tool. You can see it creates this geometry node and it calls it my geo because we put that as the second argument here. I'm gonna clear that and then move on and we're going to create a box inside of the geo node so we have a variable that we're holding this information to because if we wanted to access it later we could and then we're going to call my geo dot create node we're going to create a box type node and you can figure it out that the same way we did with the geometry node and we're going to call it my box so if you wanted to do this completely by 
long name. Basically, you could do who dot node obj slash mygeo slash yeah mygeo and then dot create node and box and my box. But if we apply this and run it, you'll see that we create the mygeo node and inside of my geo node we have a box. So we have a set of nodes now that we can start working with. And now we're going to need some numbers to work with. So here we're going to create a variable to use. We're going to set the height, width, and depth. Right now this doesn't do anything except hold those variables. If we were to look at our scene here, you can see that it is just a standard box. So there's nothing special about it yet. Okay, so we want to set the values of the parameters to these variables. The first thing we need to do is access the parameter. And here we have box, so we're telling it what object we want to adjust. Parm, which is the parameter. And I'll show you guys where you can get the parameter in a moment once we create this. And then we put a dot and we're going to set it to the value that we want. So the size X is going to be the width. The height is going to be on the size Y, which we are setting here. And then the depth is going to be on the Z axis. Okay, so let's apply. And let's run the tool. There we go. So we have a box and you can see that it has taken those parameters that we set. And let's go into the box and if you want to see the values for the expression, how to get these parameters, just hover over the size and you can see that it has about right there the parameter the parameter is size X, size Y, and size Z. So that's size X, size Y, and size Z. So you can see that we're using that parameter name there. Okay, so now assigning the expression to the parameter, we have the box. Again, we're accessing the box here. We have a parameter. The parameter is going to be center Y. So we have the center X, Y, and Z. And you can see that if we hover over this, we have center, and it is actually T, Y, T, T, X, T, Y, and T, Z. So let's adjust this. This is going to be T, Y. There we go. So we want to set the value of the T, Y to be half the height. So we want to move it half the height because it's already right in the middle. So if we take half the height right there, it should put it right on the ground. So let's go in and clear out this node and apply this and run it. So here you can see that we have created the same box and it is right on top of the ground plane, the grid here. So something to keep in mind with all of these parameters is that they are case sensitive so make sure that you keep the casing correct because if I did something like this and had a capital X and applied it and tried to run it you'll see that I get an error so make sure that you keep the casing correct and then also any sort of operations that you're using as expressions do use the order of operations you can also use parentheses if you wanted to to be able to control the order of things that how they are calculated but that is kind of the basics of numbers some operations and using some functions with numbers and a basic example in Houdini being able to access numbers and apply them to parameters I hope you found this useful. We'll see you guys in the next video.